Spinosaurus Egypticus just got added to Jurassic World Alive and we are going to play its raid in today's video. But it got me wondering, why are they adding paleo accurate variants? Well, I spoke to Lydia about it and we are going to see that reason later on in the video. So stay tuned. But for now, Spinosaurus is an age-old creature that has been in Jurassic Park since the third movie and everyone's loved it, but it was bipedal. Now it is here in Jurassic World Life, still bipedal, but more accurate with a tadpole tail. So have a look at this thing. Let's show off all of its like sanctuary animations and whatnot because, you know, it is an Omega, so obviously you can't normally put it in the sanctuary. But with AR, we can feed it play with it so hopefully you have seen all those animations what do you guys think of it i think personally it is really awesome like and i've heard everyone loves this thing it's really good work jurassic World live team really good job but it has three skins so one of them is marsh and it's like a green one but let's show off all its moves in battle in sauna marshes so i did title this section of the video in Marsh. This is Sauna Marshes. And I've got the level 21 ability, so I don't think most people got this, but because I played a lot of the raid, I got DNA to unlock that level 21 ability in the beta build, which thank you to the Jurassic World Live team for providing. But yes, there are all the moves. And now, get on to the raid, the Spectral Spinosaurus Egypticus. So, it is quite easy, actually. All you need is a level 16 Cineraptor with its ability unlocked and a friend with the Cineraptor. Same stats, same ability, and you can just get through it. Me and Alien New did it, and then I went with Shadow Trainer. We did it, so they're all YouTubers, by the way. Go subscribe to them, Shadow Trainer 1030 and Alien Newt on YouTube. Would be much greatly appreciated. And we all played together and got Spysaurus Egypticus to beat the raid. And Stegosaurus Ungulatus, I did talk about why are Jurassic World Alive team adding multiple paleo accurate dinosaurs? You know, Straco Lux, that was so random. Stegosaurus Ungulatus, Spinosaurus Egypticus, where are they coming from? So I asked them, I reached out, and I can't tell you everything that was said, but from what I can tell, they did say to me, it's, you know, it's inspired off the feathered T-Rex from Dominion, the Morris Intrepidus, the paleo accurate Parasolophus from Dominion. So there's all that. But yes, Stegosaurus is an age old creature that has been in the franchise for a long time too, since the second movie. And it has now been repainted, you know, Stegosaurus Ungulatus, the purple striped white skin variant. And there's also the green variant. It's got like more spikes on its neck, I think, whereas the old one didn't really have that. But moving on, what other variants do we have? Monolophosaurus GNG, I believe you pronounce it that way. But I believe this creature is coming to the franchise in Jurassic World Chaos Theory. Why do I think this? Well, we've gotten a bunch of new metal toys and obviously not all of them in, in the series, even if they are painted that way, their boxes. You know, Mapusaurus and Bajatosaurus have Chaos Theory boxes, but we know they are most likely not in the series. But Monolophosaurus, they've remade its entire mold. Why would they do that? They really only do this if a new one is popping up in the series. And this looks like a feathered variant, whereas if you look at the old variant in Cape Cretaceous, it had no feathers at all. And I did a Google search. I, you know, did a bit of research, looked through it, and there have been paleo accurate re -re renditions of Monolophosaurus with as a feathered variant. So while this toy looks <laughs> not great, I do believe in the show, hopefully it will look better and those fuzzy bits will look more like feathering. But moving on, what else will be in Chaos Theory? Smoothie the Ankylosaurus. So this nickname was hinted at thanks to Swerve and now I believe the full name for the Paleo Accurate Ankylosaurus is Ankylosaurus Magni Ventris. I do believe, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I do believe that is it. Now, how is this different from other Ankylosaurs? Like Bumpy say, well, it is different because it has a smoother back, right? And hence the name Smoothie, more like the Paleo Accurate Ankylosaurus. But yes, Bumpy and Smoothly highly contrast in their names. Obviously, you know, the opposite of Bumpy is Smooth. So, I just think that's awesome. And yes, there's been a few Ankylosauruses in the Jurassic World franchise, starting with the Jurassic Park 3 Ankylosaurus that appeared, you know, the black one with the red eye. 
and we also have the brown and color source from dress school then we had bumpy so it's nice we're now getting smoothie but dominion i did talk about paleo accurate creatures being in dominion such as parasolophus walkery and whilst it's not called by its full name i would assume considering dress school alive is adding these creatures like Spinosaurus, Egypticus, and Stegosaurus Ungulatus by their full names, I assume we can call the Dominion one Parasaurolophus Walkery. And that's why I called Monolophosaurus, Monolophosaurus GNG. That is its full scientific name. So, yeah, I do believe these are bias and variants. Whereas, you know, the old Parasaurolophus, there were a few actually, such as the Jurassic Park green one, the male one, I assume, from the Lost World, which was the yellow variant one. Then we also had Parasaurolophus Lux, my personal favorite. This is when, you know, Parasaurolophus for me personally stood out because it's never really stood out. It's never really had a special feature besides its hollow crest, its use, but now they can glow and it has that amazing pink glow. I just think is awesome. And that's reappearing in Chaos Theory too. I wonder how many Parasaurolophuses there'll be in Chaos Theory. But Tyrannosaurus Rex, 65 million years ago, the prologue T-Rex, now, we know there are multiple T-Rexes, right? We have Tyrannosaurus Imperator and also Tyrannosaurus Regina. So, the translations of Rex, Regina, and Imperator mean King for Rex, Queen for Regina, and Emperor for Imperator. You might know this because of the Imperator Sucus creature in Jurassic World Life. But, yes, I do believe the Tyrannosaurus Rex from 65 million years ago is just Rex. It is just the plain T-Rex. So, what can you really call it? You can really only call it Tyrannosaurus Rex. That is the scientific name. There's no extension add-on. Rex is the extension add-on. So the T-Rex we see in Jurassic World and Jurassic Park, Rexy and all the others, Junior, Buck, Doe, Big E.T., Lil E.T., Bull, they're basically the same thing except T-Rex has feathers. So we can really only call it the prologue T-Rex, I guess. Who knows? But yes, Morris Intrepidus is one with its full scientific name in Dominion. So whilst it doesn't have a previous variant, say a non-feathered variant that was in it since Jurassic Park, Morris Intrepidus, they decide to introduce it with its full name. They could have just called it Morris, but for some reason they've called it Intrepidus. So I wonder why they did that. Maybe they're like, Morris isn't an interesting enough name. Let's add Intrepidus in there. But that adds to the list of Spisaurus Egypticus, Ungulatus, and Intrepidus, a lot of things, but Biosyn variants. We do know they are meant to be paleo-accurate, but are not given the full name. So we've got Pyraptor, we've got Quetzalcoatlus, I do believe. We've got Therizinosaurus. And then you do, of course, have the big boy itself, the Giganotosaurus. So yes, Giganotosaurus is a Biosyn variant. It is meant to be paleo-accurate, even though it looks nothing like it. But yeah, if you want to see more on Giganotosaurus, watch the previous video. And I'll see you all later. Bye, everyone.